Ag PhD full episodes and more are now available on Acres TV, the newest ag platform connecting you to fields of information. Look for us on watchacrestv.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about short corn. What's the big talk with short corn lately, Darren? I don't, uh, I've always, growing up, I didn't watch short corn. That probably meant we had drought. Well, I would <laughs> say this. I've always wanted shorter corn because I didn't understand why do we have to grow a plant 10 feet tall just to put on one ear? If we had shorter corn, could we get more sunlight into the canopy? Could there be other benefits? That's why I've been excited about it. And finally, the seed breeders are also excited on looking for short corn. And, and you think about it, you hear Presion, you hear smart corn, you hear reduced stature, short stature. There's lots of different names for this, but it's all the same thing. It's taking that 10 foot tall plant and making it more like a six or seven foot tall plant. And there are quite a few reasons why they'd want to do it. Yeah, I, I just think about at harvest time too. It's that much less material that we have to run through the combine. So if we are after grain and that's it, I am optimistic about it. However, I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier about drought. Let's say that you do have drought in your area and you planted a short corn, that's where I get real concerned because in our testing, what we found is, well, now if it was going to only be a six or seven foot tall plant, now it might only be a four or five foot tall plant and the ear is just about right on the ground. So it probably doesn't fit in all areas, but for the vast majority of the corn growing area in the United States, yeah, it does make a lot of sense. All right, so you might be asking yourself, well, how do they make the plant shorter? What is different on the plant? First of all, we're seeing shorter internodes. So that's the, the amount of stalk in between each leaf. So really with some of these plants, I've seen some dwarf corn that's five feet tall or even less. I mean, literally a leaf stacks right on top of the next leaf. So the internodes can get quite short. Now, most of the stuff that's going to make it commercial uh, coming up over the next few years here, uh, maybe it's seven feet tall and there's still, there still is an internode, but the gap is a little bit shorter compared to regular corn. As far as the leaf size goes, we're mostly noticing wider leaves on these plants. Maybe not as long a leaf, but a wider leaf. And in fact, some of the companies uh, like Corteva will say, well, the leaf area index or the amount of leaf that's out there catching sunlight is very similar. It's actually uh, a bigger percentage on a seven foot tall plant than a 10, and it almost makes up for that gap. But the one thing I'm concerned about, Brian, is they're talking about, well, let's plant lots more plants out there. I don't think that's necessarily it. That plus it sounds like that's gonna cost more money. So that would be my number one concern. But the big thing I kind of come back to with all this is it just sounds like conventional breeding practices to me, not GMO. Well, so there, I, there are some biotech tech traits and there's some gene editing going on and that kind of thing as well. But right now, yes, we are looking at a lot of hybrids just picked because, hey, they're shorter parents. Let's give the shorter parents a, a look and see if they can yield as much as the taller ones. And in many cases, they can. All right. The last thing I wanted to throw out, the earlier you plant, so the colder it is, the less gibberellic acid will naturally be in that plant and that plant will be shorter. So you can get your plants to be shorter naturally if you just simply plant earlier. So until we get the smart corn or short corn, whatever, in a big way, just plant earlier and you'll have a little shorter corn. Okay, one of the last things to talk about here too is just the big thing that a lot of companies are looking at is there's just been too much green snap, too much lodging in these tall, tall fields when we get big wind storms that come through. And what we're seeing is too high a population is leading to too thin a stalk. Yep. And when you have a 10 foot tall plant with a very thin stalk, it's more prone to breakage and tipping over. Yeah, so but, that's something you can fix too with fertility and planting population yeah, but this year. You, you said, hey, it's too high a population. It's too high a population for the fertility you have. We have no issue if you want to go plant 40,000 plants per acre, but you darn well better have lots of potassium. I mean lots and lots of copper and lots of manganese to have a great stock. Well, even if you don't fix that, having a shorter plant can definitely help with some of these agronomic challenges like wind. Uh, oh, and one last thing too, Brian, is now if you've got shorter corn, there's a lot more sprayers that could drive through the field and do those late season tasseling time applications. That's kind of exciting too. Yep, so we'll probably be talking about short corn a lot more in the future, but for today, we're gonna talk a little about our Weed of the Week. It's coming up later in the show.